Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. Magpuli kayo sa Panginoon Diyos, lahat ng sandinapwa. Magsinawit kayo at siya'y ipagdangal, magpapaygan na. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the memorial of St. Thomas Aquinas, a Dominican priest and a great teacher, theologian of the Catholic Church. Let us pray in this Mass that like St. Thomas, we may gain the wisdom of God so that we may understand the truths of our faith. Let us now call to mind our sins and beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who made St. Thomas Aquinas 
outstanding in his zeal for holiness and his study of sacred doctrine, grant us, we pray, that we may understand what he taught and imitate what he accomplished. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Samuel. At the turn of the year, when kings go out on campaign, David sent out Joab along with his officers and the army of Israel. And they ravaged the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. David, however, remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David rose from his siesta and strolled about on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing who was very beautiful. David had inquiries made about the woman and was told, She is Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam, and wife of Joab's armor-bearer, Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent messengers and took her. When she came to him, he had relations with her. She then returned to her house. But the woman had conceived and sent the information to David, I am a child. David therefore sent a message to Joab, Send me Uriah the Hittite. So Joab sent Uriah to David. When he came, David questioned him about Joab, the soldiers, and how the war was going, and Uriah answered that all was well. David then said to Uriah, Go down to your house and bath your feet. Uriah left the palace, and a portion was sent out after him from the king's table. But Uriah slept at the entrance of the royal palace with the other officers of his lord and did not go down to his own house. David was told that Uriah had not gone home. On the following, David summoned him, and he ate and drank with David, who made him drunk. But in the evening, Uriah went out to sleep on his bed among his Lord's servants and did not go down to his home. The next morning, David wrote a letter to Joab, which he sent by Uriah. In it, he directed, Place Uriah up front, where the fighting is fierce. Then pull back and leave him to be struck down dead. So while Joab was besieging the city, he assigned Uriah to a place where he knew the defenders were strong. When the men of the city made a sortie against Joab, some officers of David's army fell, and among them Uriah the Hittite died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin, cleanse me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and that what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. I have done such evil in your sight that you are just in your sentence. Blameless when you condemn, 
true, I was born guilty, a sinner, even as my mother conceived me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Let me hear the sounds of joy and gladness. The bones you have crushed shall rejoice. Turn away your face from my sins and blot out all my guilt. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow, he knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that when it is sown in the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its, blade, in its shade. With, such, with many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, for more than a week now, our first readings from the book of Samuel were about King David and how great a king he was. But in today's first reading, we also, we also heard the greatest sin that David ever committed. The sin of lust that led to adultery, the sin of adultery that led to murder, committed by the highest person in the land, the king. Because of lust, David committed adultery with Bathsheba, who was married to David's soldier, Uriah. And that adultery resulted to a child. And in order to hide the sin and the fruit of the sin, 
David called Uriah, thinking that if Uriah is back, he will go home to his wife and have relations with her. And so it will not be thought that the child is other than Uriah's. Gumagawa ng paraan si David na ilihim at pagtakpan ang kanyang kasalanan. Pinipilit niyang umuwi si Urias sa kanyang asawa para palabasin ng pagbubuntis ng kanyang asawa ay dahil sa kanya kay Urias at hindi kay David. But Uriah refused to go home and sleep with his wife. And because of this, David ordered Joab, the commander of the army, to put Uriah where the battle is fiercest so that he would be killed. Nung hindi na niya mapagtakpan ang kanyang kasalanan, ipinapatay niya si Uriah para wala nang sagabal sa kanyang kasalanan. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, sin always tries to hide itself. We are never proud of our sins. Sino ba naman sa atin ang ipinangangalandakan pa ang kasalanan nating ginawa? Ang kasalanan inililihim. Ang kasalanan pinagtatakpan natin. Ang kasalanan pinipilit nating malusutan. Dahil ang kasalanan hindi ipinagyayabang. But if sin is something that we try to hide, goodness is something that manifests itself even without us intending to. In our gospel today, Jesus narrates two parables about the kingdom of God. And in these two parables, Jesus likens the kingdom of God to Invi seemingly invisible little things but eventually they become great like a mustard seed. That is the kingdom of God, the kingdom of goodness, the kingdom of truth. You cannot hide goodness and you cannot hide the truth. Yesterday, in our gospel, Jesus said, There is nothing hidden that will not be known, no secret that will not be made visible. And the truth and goodness, like light, will always shine. Yung kabutihan, hindi natin yan kayang itago. Kahit na hindi natin ipaalam, ipangalandakan, makikita at makikita. At hindi ka matatakot na malaman ang kabutihan na ginagawa. Hindi ka matatakot na makita ang mga kabutihang ginagawa mo. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the memorial of St. Thomas Aquinas, a Dominican priest and considered as one of the greatest minds in human history, one of the most influential theologians our Catholic Church ever had. He wrote many commentaries about the Word of God, about the Scriptures. He has many works on theology, philosophy, ethics, and even politics. He was a great man, a very intelligent man. But despite his brilliance, 
he remained very humble. He was even called a dumb ox because he rarely speaks. It is in humility that we see his greatness. And even in his silence and humility, Thomas Aquinas shines. For you cannot hide goodness. Goodness, like light, will always shine. My dear brothers and sisters, today let us look at ourselves and see what are the things that we try to hide. What are the things that we try to avoid? Ano ba yung mga inililihim natin sa ating buhay? Ano ba yung mga pilit nating pinagtatakpan sa ating buhay? Mga minamahal na kapatid, ang mga bagay na inililihim, pinagtatakpan, at ayaw pag-usapan, Madalas yan ay masama, kasinungalingan at kasalanan. Pero ang kabutihan, hindi ka matatakot na makita at malaman. If you are on the side of the truth, if you are on the side of Jesus, you need not hide anything. Because if you are in the side of the truth and of Jesus, like light, you will always shine. Please stand. Full of hope and confidence, we make our prayer to God the Father, anxious for an increase of His presence in our life. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Church may continue to grow and be a symbol of justice, love, and truth in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that as a community, we may not be idle in our life of faith, but every day seek God, even in our difficulties and sufferings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That families, especially our children, may grow in the ways of grace and mature into Christ-like people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that the sick may be strengthened in their faith by uniting their sufferings with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our beloved dead may reap the fruits of peace, joy, and serenity in God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. We remember the people who need our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. Heavenly Father, help us grasp the importance of the time in which we are living. Open our hearts to your word so that we may always bear fruit. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become may become acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice which we gladly present on the feast day of blessed Thomas Aquinas be pleasing to you, O Lord. For taught by him, we too give ourselves entirely to you in praise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Thomas Aquinas, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Jose our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles, with St. Thomas Aquinas and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us now pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Sa kasat 
Diyos ang mabuti gawin at manahan kang ligtas sa lupain sa Diyos manatin ang kaligayahan at pangarap Please stand. Let us pray. Through Christ the Teacher, O Lord, instruct those you feed with Christ the living bread, that on the feast day of blessed Thomas Aquinas, they may learn your truth and express it in works of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Maria.